I'm really learning a lot about action research at Hogwash. Boy, I can't wait till I see my cousin Studley's face when I turn his theories into unreliable trivia. studies yet. Not all research and evaluation studies show that one variable is the cause of another. Sometimes research can demonstrate how associated or related two variables are. Is that you, Baldemort? But Dumbledore warned me about using correlational studies. Yes, yes, there is a dark side, my young apprentice of doing correlational studies is that it allows the researcher to make a prediction about one variable based on what we know about another variable. Like what, he who shall remain nameless? Take for example, one variable, characters in a movie. Another variable, survival. We can usually find a correlation that the evil character will not survive at the end of the movie. When we know that there is a correlation between two variables, then we can make a prediction. If you can find out that the character is good or evil, you can predict if they will live or die in the end. Wow! So I can predict if you are going to die at the end of this presentation? Don't rush! Correlational study, young Gata. There are two types or directions of correlation. Positive correlation and negative correlation. The researcher is taking a sample of participants and only measuring conditions that already exist. The researcher is not affecting or changing the variables such as the character or the enemy. So, what is a positive correlation? A positive correlation is when one of the values of the variables increases. The second variable then increases also. Oh, like the more evil you become, the more likely you will die at the end of this presentation? Hmm, why, um, yes! Well, what is a negative correlation, Baldy Mort? Baldy? Well, you are just plain evil, making me hang here not knowing what a negative correlation is. Barry, I'll tell you about negative correlations. I got an A-plus in my correlations research class. And a negative correlation, as the values of one of the variables increases, the values of the second variable decreases. Likewise, as the value of one of the variables decreases, the value of the other variable increases. This is still a correlation. It's like an inverse correlation. The word negative is a label that shows the direction of the correlation. For example, there's a negative correlation between watching Quidditch and class grades. Students who spend more time watching Quidditch tend to have lower grades, or phrased as students with higher grades tend to spend less time watching Quidditch. Now, another important part about positive negative correlations is strength. Correlations, whether they're positive or negative, range in strength from weak to strong. A positive correlation will be reported as a number between 0 and 1. A score of 0 means there's no correlation, the weakest measure. A score of 1 is a perfect positive correlation, which does not really happen in real or muggle world. As the correlation scores get closer to 1, it is getting stronger. So as correlation of 0.8 is stronger than 0.6, but 0.6 is much stronger than 0.3. The negative correlations will be reported as a number between 0 and negative 1. Again, a 0 means no correlation at all. A score of negative 1 is a perfect correlation, which really does not happen. As the correlation gets closer to negative 1, it's getting stronger. So a correlation of negative 7 is stronger than negative 5, but a negative 5 is stronger than a negative 2. Remember, the negative sign really doesn't indicate anything but strength. It's a symbol to show you that the correlation is in the negative direction. When judging the strength of a correlation, just look at the number and ignore the sign.
Hello, my name is Dumbledore, and I am here to highlight the advantages and disadvantages of correlational studies, as well as the criteria for judging correlational studies. An advantage of the correlational method is that we can make predictions about things and we know about correlations. If two variables are correlated, we can predict one based on the other. For example, we know that broom speed and longevity as a magician are positively correlated. So when Hogwarts admission officials want to predict who is likely to succeed at their schools and have great careers as wizards, they will choose students who can fly at high rates of speed. We know that years of experience as a magician and years of dungeon time are negatively correlated. Officials can predict that wizards who have spent more years in solitude with demons will need remedial education, not coursework and real life experience now I'd like to share a disadvantage. The problem that most lay folk have with the correlational method is remembering that correlation does not measure cause. Take a minute and chant to yourself, correlation is not causation. Correlation is not causation. This very crucial principle is often forgotten by all goblins, wizards, elves, and at times even professors of the dark side. We know that broom speeds and career longevity are positively correlated. We do not know if one caused the other. It might be that having more years of service causes a wizard to fly at more rapid rates of speed. It might be that flying at the speed of sound allows a person to have a longer and more blessed career as a magician and sorcerer. It might also be some third variable. A correlation tells us that the two variables are related but we cannot say anything about whether one caused the other. This method does not allow us to come to any conclusions about cause and effect. As we continue, you might say that you have an understanding now of advantages and disadvantages of the correlational study. During this class, we'll be asked to read a variety of studies, and some of them will be correlational. There are some things you need to consider when reading those correlational studies. Please listen closely to the following things that must be considered. Number one, has the sample been chosen to represent a defined population, or have the characteristics of the sample been so nicely defined that one can make a generalization? Number two, is the sample large enough to give stable bivariate correlations or to offset problems of capitalization on chance? Is there sufficient variability in the sample? Number three, have the variables been measured with adequate reliability and validity? Number four, have scatter plots been examined to rule out curvilinear relationships between variables? Number five, have correct correlational statistics been chosen? Number six, in multiple regression studies, has a shrinkage correction been applied or cross-validation performed? Number seven, has the author inappropriately interpreted the meaning of significant and non-significant regression coefficients? Lastly, and number eight, has the author committed the correlational causation fallacy in interpreting the results? Thank you for your time. Wow, thanks, Dumbledore. You truly are a great and good action research wizard. Has anyone seen whatever happened to Baldimort? <coughs> Researchers, this is where you can join us here at Hogwash School of Action Research, hopefully in a not so evil way. Go to the comment area of this video and leave us an owl or comment. Think about your own action research. Are you using a correlational study? What do you think of the positive and negative reasons for using a correlational study? We look forward to hearing from you.